how breathing should work. How breathing should work. How breathing should work is there's an area just under, just in front of your brain stem, just in front of your cerebellum called the pons. Now in the pons, there's a bunch of chemoreceptors that are responsible, responsive to proton molecules, or protons, okay? They're responsive to protons. If you put a bunch of carbon dioxide in that area, and it goes through the carbonic anhydrase and through the carbonic equation, whatever, you know, it saturates that pons with protons, and that's what triggers a breath, is if the, as the, as the, as the proton, as the, as the pH drops, which is the negative log of the concentration of protons, as the pH drops, your pons triggers more breaths. That's why you breathe more as you get more acidotic, as CO2 increases. This implies that CO2 is the prime driver of your respiratory rate and volume. CO2 is the prime driver, not oxygen. CO2, and by proxy, proton concentration, or pH. And that all happens in the pons. So that's what controls it, is your pons. There are other things. There are also pH receptors in your carotid bodies and in the aortic arch. But the primary one is in the pons. <coughs> Anybody know the, uh, the uh, I think that that's Pucell's law in the bottom there. Okay, which means that for every reduction in the diameter of the breathing thing, it becomes four times more difficult to breathe. Okay, so if I were to make your airway smaller, it becomes much more difficult to breathe. Or if I were to make your airway longer, it also becomes more difficult to breathe. Flow depends on length and radius. For every change in radius, there's a fourfold increase in resistance. Yeah, that's Pucell's law. You can look up how to spell it later. But this becomes very important when we start talking about epiglottitis or perpharyngeal abscess or bronchopneumonia or asthma, for that matter. Even though as you get farther down the airway, flow becomes less and less of a factor. When you get to the terminal bronchioles, air does not flow. Oxygen and CO2 diffuse. They do not flow. But in the major airways, flow is a factor. Clearly, it's easier to drink out of the big straw than the little straw. All right. Machinery. Okay, so that was airway. Now we're talking about how do you breathe? One of the most important things to understand is that your lungs don't suck, okay? Your lungs don't suck. Your lungs do not ventilate. What happens is your lungs are stuck to the inside of your chest cavity and to your diaphragm. As your diaphragm contracts, does it go up or does it flatten and go down? It goes down and increases the volume in your, goodness gracious, make it stop. The bottom line is, as your diaphragm goes down, the volume inside your chest increases and the pressure drops. As a result of the pressure dropping, air gets sucked into your lungs. So, with a smaller airway, you have to generate more negative pressure to suck air down. If you drop the size of your trachea just a little bit, you have to generate four times as much force to pull the same volume of air through that hole. This becomes very important when you have somebody that's slightly hypoxic and they're generating more and more muscular contraction, but yet they're now, their muscular work is exceeding their oxygen capacity, their oxygen volume. This is why people get tired. It's because their muscular, their, their metabolic demands exceed the oxygen supply. And then you end up, so how do you fix that? You decrease their metabolic demands by providing positive pressure ventilation and decreasing that, uh, that muscle work. That's one of the ways that we help them. All right. You can see that the guy on the top has, inter, has scalene retractions or supraclavicular retractions, and then the kid on the bottom has intercostal retractions. Okay, you'll see this in kids by now, I'm sure. The diaphragm is the primary driver of the body. Can, you also use intercostals. But you see how not only does the diaphragm flatten, but that the chest wall increases. All right, intercostal muscles again pull up and you see the pleural space. And if you violate that, remember that that is a potential space and a lot of stuff can get in the middle of that, whether it's fluid or air or blood or pus, 
uh, there's a lot of stuff that can get into, the, into that potential space between the lung and the chest wall. 